Today I've come to Broomfield Hospital in Essex to meet some of the patients getting help with their burns. Today's first patient is 11-year-old Maria. Can you tell me what happened? Well, basically, when I fell asleep and I had my iPad on my leg, so, and I fell asleep on it. You had your iPad on your leg? Yeah, and I fell asleep on it. So you had it plugged in and it was getting hot because it was charging? Yeah, but I didn't yes. realise it. Maria has a condition that reduces sensation in her legs. That's why she didn't feel being burnt. That was three months ago, and she's still being treated. Today, she's seeing specialist burns nurse Susan Bozeman. OK, Maria, I'm just going to take your dressing off, darling. All right. It was a deep burn, so Maria needed special treatment. Look away now if you're squeamish. So Maria's had a skin graft operation done. So just a very thin layer of skin was just shaved off from here. And then that was put over here where the hole was and stitched round in place, wasn't it, round there? And why do you need to do the skin graft? Why can't you just let it heal the way that you might let any other cut heal? Small burns can heal up quite nicely on their own, but when you've got a bigger and deeper burn like this, you need to give nature a little bit of help because otherwise it's very sore and it's more likely to get an infection in it and it will take a very long time to heal over. Over time, that will go back completely to normal, will it? It will, it will flatten out a bit more, yeah. um, but there will probably always be a little mark. We won't need to put any more dressings on it now because there's no raw skin, so no more dressings. Is that, is that really good news? <laughs> yeah. The next patient is Troy. He burnt his hand three years ago. So tell me what happened when you got your burn. I was on the roof helping my dad clean the gutter. There was a cable right here. Um, but, um, I thought um, it was a, a railing, so um, I put my hand on it and then uh, I blacked out. And what's the next thing you remember? Well, I remember waking up and then I looked at my hands like... And what had happened to your hand? Well, um, well, first, uh, my little finger, it isn't there now, um, but, um, but it was actually welded onto this bit here. The electric burn from the live cable was so severe that Troy's little finger had to be removed. He's also had skin grafts from his leg and his foot. How many operations have you had? Uh, Twelve. Twelve operations? Yeah. Does your left hand still do everything you need it to do? Uh, yeah. Um, well, it still plays video games, so that's all I really need it to do. <laughs> That's a relief. Today, Troy's seeing burns therapist Vicky Dudman. So, Troy, how have you been? Oh, I've been okay. Can I have a look? Go. So, any problems? Um, nothing much. Really, at this stage of the treatment, it's just about keeping on with the moisturising and massage. So, what's the massage doing when? It helps to break up the scar tissue and soften it up. This is something Troy will need to keep doing at home himself. So, Troy, from your experience, what advice would you have for the people watching Operation Ouch? That they should be really, really careful around electricity because it's um, very dangerous. Good advice from Troy, who continues well with his recovery. Serious burns can be really scary, and Troy and Maria have done a brilliant job dealing with their burns. And that's what's amazing. Your body has an incredible ability to heal itself with the right help. Time to head back to Accident and Emergency to catch up with Jack and his sausage finger. Oh, I love sausages. Do you think he's got any ketchup? Let's see him get fixed. In Manchester, nine-year-old Jack is back in hospital waiting for an operation, and he's brought along a new friend. Now I don't have a sausage finger. I have Cyril. Hello, Cyril. Cyril is protecting Jack's cut finger, and this is how it was damaged. It was Jack's birthday, and he'd been given some money to buy a gift at the toy shop. When they arrived, Jack got out of the car, and in the excitement, he closed the car door on his finger. Ouch! Jack's operation is just moments away, so Cyril's days are numbered. Tell him, Dad. You're going to lose Cyril, aren't you? Never mind, Jack. Jack's on his way to have his operation. And there's no sign of nerves from our patient. In fact, he's cracking jokes. Not not. Who's there? Dunna poo. Dunna poo. Get it? <laughs> I think Cyril enjoyed that one too. Time to prepare Jack for theatre. To make sure he doesn't feel any of the procedure, the doctor gives him some anaesthetic. Dr. Anne Markey and Dr. Adiinka Malajo are performing Jack's surgery. First, they thoroughly clean Jack's hand. The next step is to remove the nail so they can stitch up the finger. And remember, Jack can't feel a thing. Before he can start to stitch, Dr Adeyinka takes out any little bits of dirt and broken nail stuck in the wound. Next, he stitches the cut. Before gluing back on the nail. 
and there's just enough time for a quick trim. With the nail in place, a protective gauze is put around the tip of Jack's finger to stop the bandage sticking to the wound. Time to wrap that sausage finger back up. Good. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. How's the op, Doc? That went really well. He's got another sausage finger for a couple of weeks till that gets better. On the recovery ward, Jack's wide awake. So, how was your snooze? They had like this dream when I, when I was in an action figure movie. An action figure movie? Cool. But are you missing Cyril? Since Cyril's gone, I have a new sausage finger. He's forgotten Cyril already. I know. And it looks like he's about to take that sausage finger home. Bye, Jack. Bye.